Yeah. Yes, it was. Well, actually, I had worked with James in various other contexts in some chamber music projects in London. Uh, and he's a composer who, you know, my generation of musicians, I really grew up with his music, you know, his big sort of breakthrough piece, the confessions of Isabel Galdi. You know, that was a, a massive sort of uh, influence for me. I thought he's, he's really one of the most direct contemporary British composers and, and for that reason one of the most successful. This piece was, it was a dream commission because he, he's a composer I really wanted to write a viola concerto. And um, we did a tour in Britain with the Walton Viola Concerto, with him conducting, and we discussed a little bit, but uh, he got to know my playing quite well in that context. And then he came up with this magical creation, which I just love playing. James is such a, such a consummate sort of technician when he writes music. He's really, I was saying to the conductor, La Havre, Yes, it's so clear what he what he writes. There's there's no discussion really. What he's able to notate exactly what he wants. So, in fact, there were really not no changes at all in this in this score. What I received is what I still play today, and um, I think that's quite rare actually. The piece has three parts. Are they very different? Well, it's it's a good question. I think for me, what James McMillan has done in this piece is quite a bold statement because actually what he's taken is a very traditional form you know f fast slow fast for a concerto but within that he's sort of um, done some very very interesting things so I think while the sort of template for this piece is actually quite traditional within that he, he really plays with that sort of preconception the second movement in particular this sort of this extraordinary slow movement that is sort of based on quite traditional harmonies but around that, he sort of plays with the idea of melody and accompaniment and harmony in a very interesting way. So the viola takes on this role of this sort of dreamer, um, sort of thinking, <laughs> thinking about these harmonies in a, in a very curious way. It's a very powerful movement. Um, and I think it's a very clever and bold thing to take such a traditional structure and uh, work with that. One of the striking things is that you are sometimes working together with two violas and two cellos. So what's the meaning of that, you think? Well, that's, again, within this sort of traditional form, he's, he's been very, very clever with certain elements. And certainly he takes this sort of quartet of viols, almost, that present this sort of older, uh, older music, steel antico, I think he calls it, um, so within the sort of busy texture of the orchestra, you have this quartet of viols that are quite often accompanying the solo viola, which adds a very interesting sort of layer to the music. And I think, all, you know, all the great composers, I think, just have this wonderful ear for colour. And I think it's it's a very, it's a unique colour to find within a concerto, this quartet of, of two cellos, two violas accompanying the solo viola. And it's also very theatrical. I think James has, a, has an eye for, for what is a powerful gesture in a concert hall. It's actually a piece that plays to the strengths of the individual sort of qualities of an orchestra. So it's fascinating how different conductors and different orchestras react to this material. Of course, that's true for all music, but somehow with this piece, it, it's quite different with, with different orchestras. Um, so in, in what sense? Is it more or less aggressive, more hymnic? Yeah, I think there are certain orchestras that play to the sort of aggression of some gestures. There are certain orchestras that play to more the sort of incredible beauty of the slow movement. Um, and there are certain sort of characteristics within the middle section of the last movement with the solo quartet. Of course, you've got four individuals in a quartet. So by definition, that's always different. Um, and yeah, I've certainly noticed the character of each of each orchestra being very, very different with this piece. What is your favorite part? I mean, I, lo I love this piece just as a general, just sort of gesture in the concert hall. I think it, it puts the viola in a very interesting light. It's, it gives the viola a voice that's not just melancholic, but also sort of powerful and heroic as well. But I think the, if I had to highlight one thing, I think the second movement is a very, again, what I said earlier, it's a very brave statement because today we're, we're so sort of obsessed about <laughs> intellectualizing things in music and I think it's bold to create something that is simple and maybe traditional on one level, um, but rather complicated on another level. So I think that's, I enjoy playing that movement very much.